What's up, Whack Pack? Eugene here. Hope you're all well. Going to do a perfume unplugged. But first of all, just want to wish all the Father's Day out there a happy Father's Day. All the single moms with no fathers around, I want to wish you guys a happy Father's Day as well. Um, so we're just going to talk off the cuff here, get to know each other a little bit better, a little bit better than we already do. Um, I want to thank the Whack Pack for all their tremendous support, um, for keeping it real. I often say that I've got some of the best viewers out there, and I truly believe that. I've got, you know, my viewers do have the best taste on all of YouTube, um, and they're always there to to kind of put me back in track. You know, they're, they're, they're calling me out too in, in some instances, so I really do appreciate that. Um, so for Father's Day, I, I do have four children, four boys. And uh, this morning they kind of took me out for breakfast and we went to our, our usual hangout. Every Sunday morning we go out for breakfast. and So nothing has really changed today. And I went with uh, Coral Mandel from the Chanel Exclusives. And this is the Eau de Parfum. I do have the Eau de Toilette, but I've just, I don't know, I'm not really been saving it. I've just been wearing the Eau de Parfum for whatever reason, which I love so much. So I've kind of noticed, and, and this is all just really subconsciously, it's not anything that I've planned, but, uh, you know, these day-to-day -day outings that I have with the family or these special events, I've kind of been um, regurgitating Coral Mandel and Mus Musk Ravageur, which I wore last Father's Day. I did a Father's Day video. And uh, anytime there's kind of a birthday or an event, I, I'm kind of going back and forth between Coral Mandel and and Musk Ravageur. So just kind of something that I want to create scent memories attached to uh, special things in my life. So later on in the afternoon, I went for another favorite. And this is uh, Un Fleur de Cassis. If you watch my channel, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know I have a lot of praise for Frederick Mull's Un Fleur de Cassis, which is a very bold, salty, dry, um, almost a leaves a pasty taste in your mouth, floral. Uh, I know a lot of guys are afraid of wearing florals. They feel a little bit too feminine for them, but I, I honestly, I, I'd say guys, give it a shot because... To me, they're some of the most interesting things in all of perfume. Um, so I want to share my favorite fragrance for the month of... Damn, we're still in May, right? June. <laughs> I knew that. June, so... All right, so the long weekend isn't for two weeks away. But so far... Um, Caron's Third Man, easily uh, the fragrance I have enjoyed the most for the month of June. Uh, I've worn it a couple times. I've worn it twice to work, and I wore it once uh, to the theme park, took the kids to Canada's Wonderland, which is the biggest theme park here in Canada. And I had sworn off of uh, roller coasters, you know, since the last time we went, but my oldest was like, we were going on a really big roller coaster. I think it's called Leviathan. And my oldest is like, come on, dad, come with us. It's really cool. You got to try this. And I was like, oh my God, like just looking at the height and the twists and turns of this thing. I was like, oh, but I didn't want to look like a pussy. So I was like, all right, I'll come on with you guys. And it was just so high. And it has this 90 degree drop and these like loop the loops and these twists and these turns. And I'm like, man, I am way too fucking old for this so i got on i buckled up and i just shut my eyes and i put my head down like kind of cradled myself and i was like you know it's 30 seconds this is going to be over really quick you don't need to open your eyes just you know get lost in your perfume and that's exactly what i did and the whole way I was able to smell my perfume. I think everybody on the ride was able to smell me because this stuff was just like, it was just 
popping off my skin. And um, it's kind of what got me through this damn Leviathan. So this is basically a lavender, clove, and vanilla balm. And this doesn't get a whole lot of talk about on YouTube. I don't know why. People are too busy um, reviewing clone brands and clone fragrances that you can get for really cheap. Well, I don't think there's... Luki, can you turn it down a bit, please? I don't think there's uh, something you can get this affordable for this kind of quality. Um very similar to Caron Puronome. It's just I find it, a, you know, Caron Puronome is, it's mainly lavender and vanilla and there's some spices in here, but this is more complex. It's, uh, it's probably more formal, more for going out or, you know, Puronome is more casual, something I'd wear around the house or, or even going to bed. It's just very relaxing and cozy. This is more sophisticated, um, very spicy, very masculine, very classic masculine, really well made. Um, something this old, I kind of thought, okay, it's going to have performance issues. It's not going to perform. It's, uh, you know, I've never had any issues with it. It's never been like not a treat to, to, to wear. So just wanted to put that out there. This is an absolute brilliant perfume. Uh, on my skin it's it's mostly like spices and and i get a lot of that clove and i think there's some nutmeg in here um a lot of dry herbal lavender very gorgeous beautiful perfume uh highly recommend y'all to try this if you like the old school classic masculines and definitely needs a lot of attention i'm not sure how many reviews there are on this on, on youtube but it's definitely not enough. There are a few though, and hopefully one day I can review it for you. So you guys all know that I've been trying to call my collection and um, I've, I've obviously come across a couple of fragrances where I'm iffy about and not really sure what to do. Like I want to keep all my, my Guerlain perfumes. I want to keep all my Chanel's. You know, when it comes to Hermes, I, I'm going to keep the majority of them. There's probably going to be a few that I don't love that I'm, I might be willing to let go. Um, you know, with Dior as well. They're, I don't love all my Dior's for some reason. Whatever reason. But there's going to be that point where I'm really unsure of what to do. And uh, I, I oftentimes go back to this, this motto that my wife has. And uh, I think it's just she came up with something while she was trying to trying to figure out if she wanted to work with specific clients. You know, clients can be a really pain in the ass. And she's like, do I want to spend the next 10 months or one year coaching or mentoring this person? They seem to be, you know, kind of this pain in the ass. And her motto was she would just ask herself, do I want to work with this person? And if the answer isn't hell yes, it's hell fucking no. And I'm not, I really like that motto. You know, if it's not hell yes, if it's not 100%, it's like, meh. So that means absolutely not. And I'm not quite there yet. I, I wish I had, you know, her kind of mindset and her frame, but I don't. There's a lot of things that I'm on the fence about. And I've got three of them here. And they're quite popular um, for the genres that they're in. And I'm going to share them with you and we're going to talk about these. So the first one is, it's kind of a bro fragrance and, you know, I didn't really like it at first. I thought it was, it was way too bro-ish, like way too masculine. It lacked a lot of like any florals. It's just a very woody, uh, this is uh Herod, by the way. You know, you know, the bottle with the cap that could kill somebody if you throw it at them. Not really sure where that started from, but I keep hearing it in every Herod video. But it's just very woody, very masculine. And it's just not really my genre. It's not my thing. But there is something that I like about it, but I'm not absolutely in love with it. 
Um, I would never really reach for this in a special occasion moment. This for me is more like going to the beer store, which I never do, or changing a flat tire type of scent or, you know, mowing the lawn, something, something like that along those lines. So what I like about it is I like, I like the interplay of spices of cinnamon and um, the resinous notes. I like, I do get a little bit of tobacco in here. A lot of people say there's no tobacco in here. It's all I, whatever. If you get it or don't, it's, it's irrelevant. I think I can pick up some tobacco and there aren't a whole lot of tobacco fragrances that I love. Um, so interesting thing, my grandparents from Croatia are tobacco, were tobacco farmers when they were around. And I have this really um, distinct memory of, I haven't met them a whole lot of times, but you know, the, 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 the several times that I've gone back home, I would knit tobacco with them and, and hang it up to dry. So I'm always looking for a great tobacco fragrance. I wouldn't call this one of them, but tobacco has a special place in my heart. I actually think one of the best tobacco fragrances is Guerlain Vetiver, which is uh, actually a vetiver fragrance, but it has a fantastic tobacco note. But anyway, to get back to this, I just think it's kind of missing some florals, missing that kind of a, you know, it's just way too masculine for me. I'm, I'm kind of looking for a somewhat of a feminine touch but that's not to say that this is awful but also does remind me of several other things um some people may agree or disagree whatever but this is it reminds me of spice bomb i i do get the tobacco vanille comparisons but i do like the cinnamon you know i like the spices in here i like you know there's osmanthus in here I can't say I get osmanthus, which is a floral, but osmanthus is supposed to give like an apricot-y, leathery vibe, which I do get that slight leathery vibe. I don't really get any fruitiness, though. And for whatever reason, I think I pick up clove, a spicy clove note in here. And I love clove as well. So that's kind of one I'm on the fence with. I know this gets a lot of hype. I don't really want to have, I don't really want to be kicking around perfumes that I'm not going to be wearing or, or loving. Here, here's the next one. And this is an old school fragrance, but this is the most modern version of it. And we don't have a Robert P. Gay um, counter here in Toronto, locally, anywhere. So it's hard for us to test these. And, um... I had Fraka here somewhere. Where are you? Fracas. I, I don't see it. Oh, here it is, Fraka. And I, I did not enjoy Fraka at all. It got great reviews by all the um, bloggers and vloggers and anyone that's writing about perfume on the internet. Love this creamy tube rose. But to me, it's 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 absolutely horrible on my skin. It's... It's very sharp and screechy and loud and obnoxious. And I, I didn't enjoy this at all. I think I bought this because of, I think Luca Turn gave this a five-star review. But for me, I, I wasn't able to enjoy this. Like almost to the point where I think it's a horrible perfume. It could have been great in vintage formulation, but this stuff is not fun at all. It's almost headache-inducing. So... That was the first uh, Pigay that I had, and I really wanted to try Bandit. This is Bandit, and again, you know, all the reviews were amazing. Bandit's like one of the greatest leathers of all time, leather sheep. Right? I definitely get the sheep part, but I'm sort of lost in the leather. And when I first sprayed it or first smelled it, it reminds me of Anteus, which I love and I think is one of the great leathery sheep rose. so that's what i would compare it most to but when i when i wore bandit i was like this isn't nearly as interesting or complex or dynamic or or put together like in Teus. and i didn't enjoy it and i almost couldn't wait for the day to end just to you know put something else not that it was harsh or synthetic it was just like meh 
really emotionless is how I felt and kind of disappointed. Like I can definitely see, you know, the old school sheep aspects to it. You know, the, the citrus and the patchouli and the moss, it's all there. I wasn't able to get any leather and, and that's kind of what disappointed me a whole lot. So I'm not really sure if it's this concentration. Is it my nose being able to perceive the leather um, or, or, or what it can be, but but actually I've got right here, I've got, I've got banded on one end of the card, which I can very clearly pick up. And I've got Enteus on the other end, both, you know, the same amount of sprays. And I can barely pick up the Enteus. I just sprayed about 30 minutes ago and bandits almost three times as loud, but that's not the way they kind of wear on my skin. You know, bandits very, it was light and sheer, and, um, you know, it wasn't invisible. I can, I can definitely pick it up on every single breath, but it was just almost like more very transparent where Anteos is very thick and, um, had that rigorness to it. You know, that, that, that manly, like big hands feeling. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm left at with bandit and really unsure. I'm going to definitely... You know, I'm going to definitely try it out a couple more times before I make my this. I'm not going to rush into getting rid of it just because. And the third one, I've got one more here. And this is Udis Fahan by Christian Dior. And when this first came out, I think this was, I thought this was fantastic. But, and it was original. It was unique at the time. But since, you know, it's been a long time. Since then, a lot of other things uh, similar and familiar to this have come out where this has kind of put this on a back burner for me and I haven't worn it in a couple of years. So things that remind me of this is Oud Palau, um, even some of the Guerlain uh, Absolute Story, they don't smell exactly like it, but they kind of do the same thing for me. Um, MDC Ice Queer Garamante, I think is similar to this kind of. Uh, as for rose ouds, I've got rose ouds that I prefer over this. Uh, one being Cart, I think Cartier's uh, oud and rose or rose and oud, whatever it's called, is my absolute favorite rose oud perfume right now. This to me, what I like about this is again, it's got that clove note. Clove always reminds me of old man. Um, I could be perceived as old man, but I think somebody even older than me, somebody sophisticated and elegant. So it's not in a negative connotation. Yeah, I've got the rose and it's um, it's quite skanky as well. I love skanky perfumes. But my wife can't stand this on me and says it's absolutely vulgar, which is also for me, you know, it's a good sign that a perfume is interesting or it's got, you know, that... I just love those dirty, skanky perfumes. But there's something in this that just, I don't know if it's the loudness or, you know, just the strength of it that just kind of, I don't want to say repulses, but just pushes me away from it. And I'd much rather wear, you know, Oudis Fahan, um, um, Oud Palau or, or, or Queer Garamante or, something else there's a lot of patchouli in here there's got to be some musks and civet there's yeah there's definitely civet so you know it's that smoky woods oh, it's it's quite good but it's not something that I, I you know it's not something that i reach for or have reached for in a long long time where i love like i i see uh, leather oud as this guy's partner or its sidekick and i love 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 leather oud like i'd probably put it in one of my top 10 perfumes of all time so they're very familiar very simil similar you know they've got that um kind of like civet like that pissy patchouli skankiness in the dry down where leather oud is you know more leathery and this is rosy the dry downs are very similar, but 
since I love leather way more than I do love Rose, obviously, um, I do rate leather oud on a higher level than this, but this is kind of one where I'm unsure of, and I'm almost thinking like, if it's not a hell yes, this may be a hell no. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. I've got Herod, Bandit, and Udis Fahan. I was kind of stuck on those. And maybe I'll do these um, a little more often until I'm getting, until I'm done getting rid of all the things that I plan on. But, you know, just because I want to make this clear, just because I'm getting rid of some things doesn't mean that I'm going to get rid of my whole entire collection and my journey's over because that's far from what is, this could just be, you know, the beginning of my journey. This could just be me clearing out space to make room for new things. You never know what's waiting for us. But anyway, I want to thank you all. I want to uh, shout out the WAC Pack for your support. And we will see you all again in the next video.